All right, hello, welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. We're back to playing uh, Delta Green tonight. And if you're watching this, you can see the big news. Steven has been fired. He has been replaced by a series of <laughs> images and a far better player. Uh, as uh, my Trey is joining the cast. <laughs> Yay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sadly, uh, Steven role played his, uh, his character Finn so incredibly well, uh, that he has depleted himself of willpower and could not stream tonight. Uh, so, uh, so my is going to step in and my is going to join us for a little while. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. And, uh, and, uh, and we'll, 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 yeah, we'll see how we, how we bring it. I'm very excited. Very excited. Um, what of Merlin? That's an excellent question. It's an excellent question. Uh, Ashley, did you listen back to last week's episode? There are two things that made me laugh last week. I was listening back to it earlier today. Two things. You ready? What? First one. Uh, I absolutely laughed at the little girl saying abracadabra to Stephen okay, yeah. as Vin. That cracked me up. Abracadabra. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So funny. And the second thing was uh you for you not uh recognizing yeah. the last name ellis and it took you a bit it took you an extra beat and then you eventually got it you eventually got it but i was just we were all just kind of laughing i was laughing so focused i didn't mm -hmm. right over it's fine i mean i agree he was a fairly forgettable character which is why we get rid of him <laughs> and then it, uh, it hurt steven's feelings and i felt bad and i'm like i'm sorry that's Sometimes that's not true i have a bone Steven doesn't actually it. have feelings, so it's it's perfectly fine. And most of them, if, <laughs> if they do exist, they're usually very mean-spirited and directed at other people. Uh, so we can say all these things because he's not He's going to watch. Steven's yeah. he's got gonna like watch. those big brother vibes, you know, the one who like <laughs> picks on you to show that he loves you. Is that, do you think that's what it is? Do you know what it is? That's, that's what, what he says. says. He that's really he does says. play with my emotions. There are times in which I talk to him and I'm like, man, Your I feel really good about myself. Your relationship is special. I feel well, you guys I think are like uh, enemies to lovers to enemies sometimes. I like yeah. it. There's just times the where tension. I'm just like, oh man, I feel really good about myself. You know, I feel it. And then other times I'm like, man, I feel really bad about myself. Wow, it's interesting. It's interesting. You I know. think it's sometimes you're like, I feel too good, Steven. And then is? he's like, don't worry, bro, I'll shit on you. And then you're good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate I'm... that reframe, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm chatty yeah. today. Are you guys ready for this? Chatty. I've been sure. alone with my thoughts too long. <laughs> so, uh, I have been trying a new, uh, a new process for audio this week. So if anything happens, if you're watching this live right now, and if anything weird happens with sound, please immediately let us know. Uh, as I'm still getting used to this new setup, I started doing it in our Tuesday game that Steven was running, did it last night with Simber. I'm doing it tonight and moving forward. Like there's a few things I'm trying, I'm experimenting with different ways to kind of maybe improve some sound quality, improve some video quality is like the next step after that. So we'll see how it goes. But before, uh, before we uh, we get into our, our course of play, why don't we do a quick introduction to the agents that are here and that we do know, as we will learn about the new one later. Uh, and we're going to start with Long. Long, tell us about who you're playing. Hey, Agent Inferno here. I'm pretty sure I'm Italian, and I like the pizza. <laughs> oh, it's just... It's just... I just remembered I have to call my mama. <laughs> oh, man. Now, oh my uh, gosh. Now I really, really want the call from Agent Inferno's mother. How come you never call me? I'm so glad that I <laughs> keep this whole side of my life completely secret from my family. Because if they <laughs> watch this stream, especially my mom's side, they would be very horrified. Uh, <laughs> but thank you, Long. Excellent. Excellent. Next up, Melissa, uh, who are you playing? Uh, I am playing, uh, Agent Fuller. Uh, her real name is Sandy Kulik, but I don't think anyone here knows that and they will immediately forget that they heard it. Uh, so mm -hmm. she is Agent Fuller. She is a, uh, medical examiner by training and mm -hmm. yeah. Interested Fantastic. looking around and seeing who we've got. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then uh, finally, Ashley, please tell us about who you're playing. 
I am playing Lisa Young or Agent Blair Weaver. Um, she is a relatively newer agent. Um, and <laughs> so she's had some great moments where she's meeting new characters, specifically Melissa's characters. And I immediately dip into Valley Girl. Hey, girl, we're over here. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you did. that trend will continue just so <laughs> we're clear mm, maybe. maybe unless i die we'll see and then i'll have maybe. to figure out a new shtick i still think we should do a crossover delta green valley girl stuff like oh my god hello uh fbi open <laughs> up you know yeah stuff like i'm that. the fucking fbi you think you can mm -hmm. keep me out of here i'm in your oh my god, what yeah like that'd be great it really is one of my favorite <laughs> voices to do because you just kind of move your head back and forth. Yeah, you're kind of like, <laughs> like uh, you know what bird that is. It's very yeah. bird-like. Because if Naomi like, uh, tried to pull that guy. stuff with a valley girl, too it would just be like, too what are you doing? Like, oh my god. <laughs> or it could be the creepy child sidekick. Oh my god, I should have done Naomi as a as like a, as a preteen. <laughs> as like a 12-year-old, you know, or 11-year-old. Yeah. Oh man, she would have honestly probably murdered <laughs> Steve's character. Like, like, oh my God, you're so old. I'm like, ugh. No wonder you couldn't see me. Your eyes are like just kind of covered with like glaucoma. Oh my God. Yeah. This is great. Okay. And we will learn uh, soon about who my Trey is playing. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead. Let's hit some summary. Uh, I wrote a summary today that was way too long. Tried to tried to shrink it down. It's still really long. So I'm going to see if I can skip through this uh, a little faster on stream. Last time around, uh, G Cell uh, was going through Ronnie Lightside slash Frank Ryder's apartment, uh, trying to figure out what the hell's going on because there's suspicion that something unnatural was involved with his death. Uh, Inferno, you found a hidden panel in a bedroom closet that basically had a whole mess load of, uh, of Ronnie's special IDs and guns, et cetera. And most importantly, uh, some burner phones, one of which had a message on it. Uh, when uh, Weaver started digging into the phone, she realized that there was a single contact and only one contact. And that was by the name of Merlin, which would have probably been something that Weaver would have raised an eyebrow at. And when you started looking through the exchange of texts, there was all, there's this conversation about night hags. There was conversations about, uh, like the paramental factor and the terror that comes in the night to texts that Merlin recommended to Ronnie, uh, when he was asking about these night hags. It also, there was references to like Merlin not appreciating his accommodations. And then the last exchange was Ronnie asking about the sorrows. And then two hours ago, the response finally coming saying, I don't know who they are. Uh, you eventually, Weaver, you eventually sent out a, t uh, a text because you tried to call the number, but the voicemail was full. You sent out a text saying, call me. Uh, and you haven't gotten a response yet. Uh, other things that you did, uh, you started flipping through that paramental factor, which Agent Fuller was able to find. It presented itself as kind of nonfiction, but it was taking these very large bit of license and it was trying to depict uh, effectively, uh, alien abductions is what it was looking like. Uh, other things Inferno found, you found some keys, you went looking for Ronnie's car, you had a bizarre and relatively terrifying experience inside the elevator as it was going down to the ground floor. It screeched to a halt. That same sort of twisted, creepy looking old woman that you saw terrorizing, uh, Ronnie on the street was suddenly there in the elevator, in the dark with you cackling. You kind of scrambled around and once you found your flashlight on the ground, she was gone, the doors opened, the lights were back on, and there was a different resident of the building asking if they could help with you. Uh, you went outside, you found his Dodge Challenger, kind of an old model Dodge Challenger. You found a business card uh, to Nagel's books and a guy named Jerry. Uh, and then you also had this weird experience. You saw this golden eagle that's completely out of the blue, shouldn't have been there, made no sense to be like in this kind of coastal town. Uh, back in the apartment, Price, he found a journal written in Ronnie's hand, noted a bunch of different names and references, uh, both within the building perhaps, and some other things that he was theorizing. Um, there was also a moment where he came down to try to find Inferno and he too had a strange incident where the lights went out as he was going down the stairs, but it seemed to have been by a woman who just apologized thereafter, but the damage was done as he smashed his face into the wall. He then had like a kind of impatient conversation with Bill and Connie Duke, other residents of the building who told him about Kurt Winter and how even though they weren't friends really with Frank, 
Kurt Winter apparently was, a young, aspiring newspaper writer. Uh, Price and Inferno, you tried to visit Kurt Winter, but there was no one at the apartment. You did, however, get surprised by this young Naomi who caught Price trying to pick the lock and threatened him with cursing him if he continued to be a bad man uh, because Grandma had showed her how to do that. Uh, she, he also, and this really did happen, though Stephen is going to try and gaslight me, he threatened this kid <laughs> by showing her his gun and saying, maybe I am a bad man. But Stephen's going to say that he wasn't threatening. Absurd. You, however, behave uh, just fine, Inferno. And you talk the mother out of, like, freaking out. Uh, back in Frank's apartment, Fuller, you went through shelves. You found all sorts of stuff, books, photos. You found vinyl albums with psychedelic folk rock and boat uh, and, and yacht rock. You found VHS tap. VHS tapes with B-movies, hold Hollywood classics, a, cop a couple copies of directed VHS adaptations of his novels. Uh, the two of you, uh, I would say Fuller and Weaver, you wiped down the apartment, you eventually left, uh, but you did kind of bring some of those photos with you, including uh, things like uh, For Penny's Boat, which is the one that sort of stood out to you at one point, Weaver, uh, because it was the only one that actually had a dedication. It said For Penny. All the other ones, no dedication whatsoever. Later that night, you all... Uh, left the apartment building, you crashed at a nearby motel, and during that night, a few of you had some strange experiences. Fuller, you had an extremely vivid reenactment of Ronnie's accident, and just like the ragdolling around of the broken bones and the bleeding out of Ronnie. Price and Inferno, meanwhile, had an experience that was very, very similar to what Ronnie had described in his journal, what he was calling a night hag attack, uh, paralysis in bed, a dark presence in the room, pressure on your mattress, all those types of things, an inability to react, speak, etc. In the morning, Inferno, you woke up, but Price didn't. And he was asleep, catatonic for a very long time until Fuller eventually injected him with like adrenaline or something. So later, Price stayed behind in the motel because he had a rest. The rest of you went back. You wanted to meet with Kurt Warner, or excuse me, Kurt Winter. Uh, you informed him of Frank Ryder's death. He didn't take it very well. He raced upstairs to Frank's apartment, but there was no answer. Then he knocked on the, the door across the hall, called for a woman named Maddie, but there was again no response. And while all this was happening, Agent Fuller, you hung back inside Winter's apartment. You saw some similar books, but you also noticed that he uh, that Kurt had that same kind of framed moth display that was kind of interesting uh, that you had seen in Frank's uh, apartment as well. And then as you as uh, as you all were kind of returning back to Winter's apartment after like kind of consoling him, Naomi emerged from a dark corner in the hallway and asked Agent Inferno, "Did the bad man not come?" And uh, and that was where we ended. So we're going to pick up. We're going to flash back. Uh, we're going to rewind the tape just a little bit, just a little bit. Everyone, calm down. And <laughs> we are. Once more inside the apartment for Frank Ryder or Ronnie Lightside. We can see his books and things are still everywhere. Fuller, Weaver, you both wiped everything down. Uh, and this definitely seems post your inspection. We can see sunlight coming in the windows. Uh, and we can, uh, we can see that there are still tons of books, tons of belongings, etc. all around. Uh, we hear like sort of this vague sounds of voices out in the hall, some distant sounds, some distant music being played, etc. But the room itself is not empty, as there is a woman in here. Maestro, can you describe uh, what this woman looks like and what is she doing inside of this apartment? Uh, there is a, a, a woman who's about 5'8", uh, 5'9", five, five, early 40s. Uh, she has short black hair um, with uh, white, like, slash white streaks in it. And um, she is, she got uh, plastic gloves on and she's kind of just sort of taking in the awards uh, that are on the shelf. And she is in a, a gray suit. And white shirt, uh, brown belt, gray pants, um, and has a messenger bag, uh, and and she's, uh, you you could uh, generously call her stiff backed. <laughs> she she's uh, everything about her is very starched and pressed. 
What is your search uh, skill? What, what are you at in terms of search? Uh, I am at... Probably up if I opened up my character sheet. <laughs> just throw out numbers. Uh, sorry, numbers <laughs> I, I got all caught up talking to Ashley and I like forgot to, to do that. Uh, search is 50. Okay. So what you can immediately tell, and you've probably been near for a little bit, someone has beat you to the scene. Like you've got your gloves on, you've got a handful of like a forensic kit, usual stuff that you might expect to have. And you can definitely tell that the place has been kind of wiped down. And you notice that there are a few things missing here and there. There are, there are these sections of the shelves that uh, are missing things. And although that's, it's possible he could just not have put things on there, you can just tell by looking at it that some stuff has been removed. And you also notice uh, that there is a closet in the bedroom. And you can see the familiar, like, as everyone, we all know this by now, tropical shirts of uh, of Ronnie Lightside hanging in the closet. And you can see that there is a panel in the back of this closet that has been dislodged. When you peek behind it, it's not an uncommon thing for uh, for certain people of this profession to have these types of little hidey holes, but it's completely empty. You look around for any signs of like actual personal items in terms of like notes, dress book, etc. There's nothing like that. And it's while you're doing this that you suddenly hear a bit of a commotion outside and you're in the bedroom and you're kind of looking at this um, at this closet and you just hear thump, 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 Frank, Frank, you it. And then like moments later, you hear like a little a second shouting. This is it's a young man's voice and it's a little bit more distant, a little bit. It's a little bit more muted. And you hear Maddie. Oh, my God. Patty. And you hear a couple other voices man woman you hear the name kurt and then you start to hear the voices begin to get softened and some footsteps as they seem to be moving away from the door itself is there anything you do at that moment uh i heard the name kurt you did um okay uh i am going to make to leave but before I do um, I'm I, I'd like to look for two things in specific um, of course. one is I want to go to the bathroom and look at the medicine cabinet and see if there are any prescription meds that uh, he was being given mm-hmm. uh, um, we can roll it over sorry. you're 50 you're, you didn't have to roll you're, that's, the, that's one of the things I love about Delta Green is that unless it's specific like in time sensitive like so if you go over you search and you go through the the, the filing cabinet you go through the medicine cabinet uh you do notice that he appears to be on what looks like high blood you know blood pressure medication uh and he's got okay. some other random over-the-counter stuff here and there for like pain relief sleeping pills that kind of thing uh but the only prescription kind of orange bottle seems to be uh, just high blood pressure okay uh the second thing that i would like to look for is his cigars uh did you guys take the cigars i cannot remember to be honest okay uh, i don't think so but yeah we'll say you do find uh kind of not on the coffee table but in the in the sort of the main living area there's a couch there is a well-worn seat uh, like a recliner and next to it there is a small stand like a uh, for like putting drinks and you can see there's a couple of remotes and there strangely is a box of cigars uh, right there. It seems like an odd place to put them, but at the same time, maybe it's within reach, but there it is. I'm going to take uh, three or four. I, oh. I don't want to empty it out, but I, I want to take maybe half of what's there. Absolutely. Put on a Ziploc bag and stick that in my messenger bag before I leave. Okay. So you do that, and then you step out into the hall. Uh, now, we're going to cut at that point to the moment at the threshold where Naomi steps from the shadows and says to you, Inferno, that, you know, did the bad man not come? How do you respond to that? You kind of started to, but we cut right at that moment. So how, how do you respond to that? He's staying home today. And you can see, like, 
her head just kind of dips and she's got this smile that's like this just kind of the shit eating grin come over her i warned him (laughs) and what about you naomi don't you have school today i'm feeling sick (laughs) you should probably get back inside does your mom know you're out here and it's right when you say that that you hear uh, the voice of her mother once more, which you're familiar with, having met her last night. Naomi! And you can see her th- th- coming up steps. She's like, Gip, if you're if you're healthy enough to wander about the the building, then you're healthy enough to go to school. And she's like, I'm sick. I'm not feeling good. And she just kind of the the woman in her 30s or so comes over, grabs her by the wrist, and starts like, Come on, come on. And then she looks at you again in front of her. She's just like, you again. <laughs> and then she keeps going. Okay. Inside Kurt's apartment, there's the three of you. There's Kurt. And Kurt is in a state. Like he has, you guys were the ones who essentially broke the news of his death, of, uh, of, of Frank's death to him. And he has been crying and kind of you know, a little bit of a rage moment here and there as he just didn't think it's true. Uh, you chased him upstairs. You calmed him down. Fuller, you hung behind and you you peeked around. You didn't do it like a particularly intense search, but you peeked around here and there. But you can see he comes back in and he there's a, a small little like two seat, like not, not like a full kitchen table, but it's like a small little, like breakfast table uh, that he has situated uh, right next to the kitchen and he just flops down uh, into the chair and I can't believe he's dead. What? I can't believe he's dead. And he just kind of stares, stares like yeah. straight ahead. Fuller just kind of goes and just kind of fills a glass with water mm-hmm. and just kind of walks it over to him and, and just kind of hovers her hand sort of by his shoulder a little bit. Uh, okay. it's devastating, devastating news for all of us. Who, who are you people again? It's a little complicated with some work things. Um, I mean, you said you worked with him, but he's retired. So, like, I don't understand. Um, I can't make so our, he, he said you guys were, were researching together um, some things. Uh, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, a little bit here and there. Like, you know, um, I help him out and he helps me out. He, I, don't, I don't know. Like, he write, he used to write, I write and... Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, again, that's me, though. What about you? Who are you people? I don't understand. This doesn't make sense. Thank you for the water. This just doesn't make sense, though. Like you. And it's just just like, how did you know who he was? How did you know he was dead? How did you know who I was and where I was? Like, I, I don't understand any of this. Like, and I, I think I deserve some answers. My friend just died, and I have three strangers in my home, and none of you are telling me anything. I, I don't understand this. Like, I I don't want to have to do this, but I will call the cops if I have to. All right, cut. We met him. He was on vacation, and we met him. A vacation? I, when? I mean, yeah, I guess he goes away a lot. Yeah, I mean, he goes on the cruises, I guess. So, yeah. On the cruise? Like, do you go on, like, are you on the cruises with him? We've been on a couple of cruises, yeah. We might have seen him there, but he spent time in Florida. That's where we met him. Oh. Oh, yeah. I guess that's... Um, we happened okay. to be in town, and that's where he lived. Um. All right. Um, what's your persuasion? It's pretty, pretty good. I it's think. a I number. Think 53. Yeah. 53. 53 yeah. I, I think that's good. I think no real necessary. And he's like, um, 
Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I didn't even know that he really like had other friends. I thought I was just like me and Maddie. It was it. But all right. Um, he never yeah. really spoke about you guys to us either, so. Oh. Um, oh, okay. Um, well, I, I mean, yeah, I, okay. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. Like, he, okay. Like, he's only been here and been for a few years at least. You know, I figured he might say a thing or two. No, that, that's okay. I, guess, I mean, I guess when you're on vacation, you don't really, you know, talk about. Yeah, okay. You don't okay. really talk about your real life too much yeah so all right god i guess i guess we gotta make arrangements or something like i mean i gotta get into the apartment um before mrs sterrett gets up there because she's just gonna take everything he's got and just chill a state sale it and and that's that. So uh, I'm going to have to talk to Todd. Todd will, Todd will let me in so I can make sure. Okay. Um, and then I got to write an obit. Um, someone's got to because he doesn't have anyone. Like, oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. So okay. If, 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 I can, if I can ask, like, how had he been lately? Um, he had mentioned the nightmares and that you were having them, too. You can see uh, what's your human? Uh, mine's only thirty-two. Uh, give us, yeah, give us a roll. Um, you can take because you've kind of earned a little bit of his trust. Take about a plus twenty to this. So roll your human plus twenty. Okay. And uh, and we'll see how that goes. Oh no! Oh, so That's close, like crit but a critical. Mail. Okay. Um, Damn. he definitely at that point. He clams up and he's like, wait, I thought he said, I thought he said, as he points over to Inferno, that Frank didn't say anything about me. And now he Not told on you the cruises. about dream. What? We, we, we just, we just, we just met up with him a couple days ago. So like this was new, new information to us. It's like why we're here. And he just mentioned that he was just struggling with these things and we're 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 all just trying to make sense of this too it's just a absolutely tragic situation and we're we're just like you know a little bit and we know a little bit and between us we put together this picture of him and who he was and that's how his memory lives is we all share these inform we share these memories that we have of him with each other uh, he, you could tell he's sort of eyeing Weaver at this point, like out of the side of his eye. Uh, I, I get what you're saying, but those details, I told Frank in confidence. Frank doesn't doesn't tell other people about things told to him in confidence like he's he's many things but he can keep a secret like this isn't why i don't know the details of your dreams just that you were having nightmares yeah i was having it, dreams why do you know this it, it, he was trying to figure it out like he was trying to get answers and you know that's what sometimes we can help with finding answers to things and i think he just really wanted to he was distressed about it and it you know seems like maybe you were distressed about it too and he's trying to figure it out for both of you and he was trying to get answers I, he, he really didn't divulge information like he really did still keep your confidences just trying to figure Go it ahead. out and I think he was desperate Go ahead and roll persuasion. At this point, there's a oh, thank goodness it's persuasion. The <laughs> there's a knock on the door. Was, yeah, angling. You hear a knock on the door as you. So as you're saying that, there's a knock on the door, uh, and he's and he looks up. Oh, now what? And he gets he gets up. But what's your role on that to see whether or not you can pull this back from the the crit fail? Oh yes, twenty eight under sixty. Um, and he's like, yeah. Yeah, we had one second. Yeah, we had dreams. Yes. And they were very similar and it was really strange. And one second. Uh, and he kind of looks through like, 
who and who is this uh, opens the door and there is who we know from the overlay is agent ray and he's like um can i uh, good can morning I help you? sir and she pulls out an fbi badge uh uh agent ray with the federal bureau of investigation uh do you have a moment to speak about uh frank ryder and she uh, looks inside, she's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize you uh, had guessed that this would be better if we spoke in private. I mean, I don't even know who these people are, but they seem to know a lot about me, so. Oh, um, well, then you and they're asking about mind asking Frank them too. to leave so you and I can speak in private. Uh, um... He turns around. Fuller's uh, leaning around a bit <laughs> and sort of eyeing um, Agent Ray. She is not looking at you. <laughs> she's looking at she's We making, are looking specifically at, at him. Trying to put some pieces together about Mr. Ryder. We're all here trying to... Help uh, each I'm, other. I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, this is an official investigation. Frank Ryder was a uh, person of interest in an act of investigation. I'm going to have to ask that you surrender the premises to a conversation between myself and Mr. Winter. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, ask you to leave then. Um, um yes. Um, and so Fuller and is going to sort steps of steps in at this point, very yeah. authoritatively. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Winter. Do, uh, do I need like a lawyer or something? What? No, wait, I, I just need to speak with you and it would be better if it was in private. That, that's all. Especially if you don't know these people, it's they don't. I I mean, they're supposed to be friends of Frank's. That's what they said. They, uh, uh, oh. he, he goes on cruises with them, and apparently Frank tells this oh. one all of my secrets. No, well, no, no. Uh, perhaps no, no. you shouldn't leave the building then. If you wouldn't mind giving me about 20 minutes here, I can meet you in the lobby. That would be... Um, and Fuller's like looking at Weaver <laughs> and Inferno and she's like she thinks she knows she what's going on. She very much looks the part. Like she looks yeah. like a better got the badge and everything. And yeah. Yeah. wasn't afraid to flash it. Look at that. You see that? <laughs> she's not in the show for 30 minutes. <laughs> Boom. Badge. Leveraging it. Bam. Done. <laughs> Fantastic. So Fuller's gonna look over to Inferno and look over to Weaver and just sort of kind of cock her head to the side a little bit and just say like we can go get a coffee or something and leave our cards with agent ray perhaps uh, that, certainly that that would be that would be great it'll be a busy week for you kurt we'll be around thanks um did you even give me your name i i feel like you guys know everything about me and i know nothing about you yeah, we told you when we came in. It, it must have distressed, yeah. but I'm Luca. <laughs> Luca. Lu okay. Um, okay. Thanks, Luca. Um, all right. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have to ask you to leave for now. Okay. I, I just Apparently, this is a thing now. And if your friends... If your friend... Uh, give me your number. And he... He reaches over towards his counter and like he's got like a little pad and pen, old school, and he slides. Just just write your number down and and yeah, okay. I'll give him my number. All right. And then you three get the hell out. <laughs> we do. The door closes and he turns around. He's like, I mean, the two older ones seemed okay, but the young one, she, I don't know. Like she get, she, I didn't like the vibes. Anyhow, um, so and wait. At, at this point, she, like, her demeanor kind of changes. And uh, it's like, uh, Kurt Winter? Yeah, uh, yeah. Of uh, the hi. Wilmington Star. Yeah, yeah, I read for them. Um, all right. Uh, I'm Isha Ray. And she looks uh, 
pointedly at him. <laughs> he like reaches out to shake your hand uh, at that point. Um, and probably calmed by some official. And ginger, gingerly yeah. takes it. She's like. Yeah. And you can tell he has been crying. His eyes are red. He is a young dude. He's probably 25 or so. You can tell he's he's tall. He's thin. He's got shaggy, like kind of blondish hair. He's got his, this very sparse looking goatee. He he's still in his pajama pants. Like you can see he's been wandering around pajama pants and some like right. he's it looks like he's got like a like an REO speed wagon shirt on. And he's just kind of like chill at this point. And he's been moving about the apartment building and like bare feet going up and down. And now he's back here and he looks just absolutely bewildered. Uh I, okay. I before we move forward, uh, I would really like to know if when he shook my hand, like, did he genuinely not know who I am? Yeah, he. Uh, well, I mean, what's your human actually? Uh, thirty. Um, roll human, and because you've engendered some trust, take a plus twenty. So, so you're basically you're rolling a d on d one hundred, and you want to fifty or under, oh, basically. Sweet, uh, twenty five. Yeah, I mean, you've, he doesn't, he genuinely seems like a guy who is, uh, he's just confused as can be, he's distraught, and he has no clue who you are, but seems I, to trust that you are an FBI agent. I will kind of cock by him, like, does the name Rita mean anything to you? Um, like the... The ice cream shop? The frozen no. custard place? Re Rita Feria. Uh, no. Um, no. Send I don't... emails to NASA lately? <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't work in the science section of the paper. Do you? All right, Mr. Winter. Uh, far <laughs> be it for me to tell you how to do your job. But uh, when I saw the obituary that you wrote for Frank Ryder, um, first of all, it didn't trigger my RSS feed. So I really don't even know why I saw that obit. But in any case, saw the obituary. I don't know who he is to you. And as I said, don't want to tell you how to do, do your job. But did you have to editorialize as much as you did? I mean, who is what? he? Was he some mentor that let you down? Or, I mean, I, I've been let down, my Frank. I, I know uh, what that feels uh, like. Agent Ray. So, I mean. Agent Ray. Um, I don't know what you're talking. I, I don't write obituaries. I, I, I work in the arts and culture section of the paper. We, I, I go to, like, farmer's markets and stuff. And, like, I <laughs> review, like, movies and books and I, people usually submit, uh, we don't have like a, an obit writer. People usually submit them to the paper. So, and, uh, and, 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 and Frank just died into a messenger bag and, and pulls out a, and he's just out. like, and Frank just died like last night. They wouldn't, there wouldn't even be an obit yet. Wait, no, they, I, she puts the very bag. He, I'm sorry. When did he die? Yesterday, like, I mean, they, if you can trust those people, they, uh, like, yesterday. When? Yesterday? Afternoon? I, I... No. No. I, I mean, he's not in his, That's... he's not <laughs> in his apartment. He's, doesn't answer his phone. He's, there, and there was an accident right around the corner, and it was supposed to be, uh, it was supposed to be, there was a, an old man. Um, maybe, maybe he didn't die. Maybe he, maybe, maybe it wasn't him. Maybe he's just on a cruise or something. Maybe that's what it is. And he just didn't tell anybody. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I would hope he hadn't died, but, um, I, I don't feel like anything about this is pointing me to that. Um, I, but, but I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Winter. Um, maybe it's the grief, but are you certain about when he passed? I, I mean, I, I don't know like the precise time, 
but the accident that they said that he was in, that was, I mean, I was, was at an, work. An accident. But, yeah, there was like a, he, uh, the well, the, the the guy, maybe it was Frank. It was he got hit by a, he got hit by like a van. It was it was right around the corner. It was over by the bagel shop. <laughs> and at that, she kind of clears the throat and clenches her jaw uh, several times. Um, um, I need to be able to reach you again. Um, um do you, I, yeah, I mean, I have a, I have a, have I, have a soul, I, I have a card. No, I have a card, and you see him like looking around, looking around, and he finds his messenger bag, which is on his, uh, on his couch, and he digs through it and he pulls out a card and he hands it over to you. It's like Wilmington Star News. It's got all official. It's got his name on it, arts and culture, uh, like all of that's there, and it's got his number. Are, are you? S- you didn't leave the paper yesterday or anything like that. You are still no. with the Wilmington Star News. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, uh, no, I was covering a gala last night. Like there was an art gala, and I was there all night, and that's why, you know. Um. All right. Um. Don't leave town. Okay, you said that Frank was like involved in an. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, I'm, uh, and she kind of recenters herself. And, uh, I'm unfortunately not at liberty to divulge anything further. Uh, but as I said, I will likely need to reach you uh, again. And um, um, don't leave town, okay. Mr. Winter. Um, I, I, I thank you for your cooperation, and the bureau thanks you as well. Can Can you like your can you check to make sure it's him? Like, like you got I a badge. Like, you will could, you absolutely could... be checking. Um, maybe it's not him. I, I, it would be wonderful if it was not him. Um, right. I, I will check. Um, okay. Who yeah. Were those people that were here? I am going to go speak with them now. They said they were friends of Frank's. That they hung out with him in florida and that i mean he he used to go to florida all the time he, like he did that, used to go to florida all well, the time um uh, he he hasn't been there for like a couple of years i don't know like he last time he was there he i don't know did, he said did that, frank have a lot of friends in in his life now because he, he no from the little i know he did not use to no, no. Um, and I mean, three people me. showed up saying that they were his friends. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I, I don't know. I, I mean, there's me. I mean, Maddie. I guess she's my girlfriend. She she lives across the hall from him. And then um, that's really it. I mean, like, he kept to himself. Like, he just. I don't know. He used to be a writer. I think. Did you know that he's a writer? Like, he wrote like all sorts of books and stuff and everything. And then like. Uh, he, he just kind of stopped doing it for a bit and he was helping me because I wanted to write a novel at some point. You know, this is just a, this is like the, the, this is just a gig until, you know, I, you know, so he was helping and then, yeah. And, and so there's me and that's really, I mean, he knew other people, but like, I, I, I mean, they're not friends. I mean, how often are you really friends with your neighbors? You know, it doesn't happen that sure. often. No. So, but your friend Lee, but I, I don't, uh, I don't know who they are. Oh, all right. Um, thank you, Mr. Witcher. I'll, I'll speak with them. Um, you were strictly neighbors with Mr. Witcher? You did not have any other relationship with him? Apart from the light mentorship I, he was writing about your book? Well, yeah. I mean, like, we... Like, we've been, we've been, we've been doing, like, some research together. Um, but, yeah, that's really it. Like... On what, Mr. Winter? Oh, just some, like... It's just some, like, urban legend stuff. That's all. Like, I, I don't... I think he's just... He was... We had, we both had these weird dreams. And he... You know, he thought maybe there was more to it. And I told him, you know, that's probably not the case. And he's like, well, he's going to write a story about it or whatever. I, he hasn't published in a really long time. And I think he was just 
kind of feeling it, you know, like he's been out of the game for so long that, mm. you know, so we were looking into it and it was just kind of strange and, and that's that, you know. All right. Um, I, bef- before I leave, I- is there anybody else that would have access to your email? To my email? Uh, yes. No. I mean, no. Um, I guess the tech guys at the newspaper, maybe, because, but I mean, <laughs> they would, I don't, they wouldn't do anything. Why? Why are you asking about my email? Uh, and and she you know i it's silly don't don't uh there's nothing to worry about uh thank you for your time today mr winter and uh, as i said the bureau thanks you as well uh okay. i will be in touch thank you all right and she <laughs> walks out <laughs> and as you do please roll a sand test by the way as there are some things Yay. that did not compute in that no, uh, conversation for they Agent Ray. didn't. <laughs> First sand roll. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's, a it's a crit failure, too. It's a crit fail. This is so perfect for me joining this game. <laughs> okay. Uh, the good news is, is that this wasn't like a major thing, uh, but it will be, it will be one point of sand loss. So, so crit fails from sand, sand tests. Usually it's maximum sand. This was just a zero one test. So you're taking one point of sand. Okay. Um, and that's that. Um, now as you step out into the hall, um, you look around, you don't see the, uh, the people, um, that were, that were inside with you. Uh, but you do notice, like, y- you get this, you look around and you realize, like, the lights start to flicker a bit. And right as, like, a cloud cover or something at the end of a hallway covers the, the window and it kind of gets kind of dim, all the lights in the hallway just one after the other go completely out. And it's just dark. And it's still, it's daytime. So there's still a little bit of light coming in, but literally you stepped out, the door closed and then think, think, think three in a row, just completely come out. And it all seemed to time perfectly with just like this, this shaded moment, um, in the window. And as you, as you sit with that, let's check back in with our three weirdos. So we're just tape. Looking as offended as can possibly be, <laughs> looking at each other as we like walk out. Like, the mm-hmm. FBI lady shows up. She legit. <laughs> I, I don't know. I but mean, can next time can we not open the gate with, "Hey, your friend's dead." What else? And, like, tell hey, we're here that, to give you Lisa lunch. just steps out front, and she's just fucking smoking. Like, okay. Um. What's your alertness as you're out here? Oh, mine? 31. Yeah, 31. Um, I am no Agent Inferno. What's your, what's, what's your search again? <laughs> right? What's your search My again? My search is worse. 23. Okay. Um, if you would like to roll an alertness, just a, just a flat, no, no special, go ahead and, and roll an alertness. We'll say. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> 79. Okay. Nothing happens. You're going to live forever. Uh, <laughs> Agent Weaver is uh, is getting a bit of uh, a bit of a cigarette in. Uh, and uh, what are Fuller and Inferno doing? Chatting, lobby eyeing residents. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see who in. Let's see if anybody in who comes out. Okay, you. Do notice um, as you hear the ding of the elevator, and you see it opens up, and you see three guys uh, step out, all somewhere probably between eighteen and twenty-two, twenty-three college college students. You can you can basically tell one of whom you recognize. You recognize from last night when you had your incident with that strange woman, uh, that kind of creepy, cackling, crone-like figure in the in the elevator, and then. When your light came back on, the elevator opened up and there was a man, uh, 18, 19 years old, 
big old backpack and you see him now and there's two other people with him uh so all three of them they're kind of joking talking to each other etc um and the one that you see is kind of lingering in the back between the other two uh as they kind of come out two of them go off into uh into like the the mailbox area and one of the guys the guy who rec- recognized recognizes you he's like uh hey uh hey man you, d- you doing hey, all right th- yeah give him a wave How, how's the elevator down uh same as it always is kind of creaky but it gets you there faster than the stairs at least for fourth floor folks like us you all right like you were kind of Oh, yeah, I'm you fine. Know. I'm just... The elevator was a bit wonky yesterday. Just making sure it's working fine. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, you should, you could talk to Todd if, like, there's something... If it's not... If there's something not talk to Todd, like, he's uh, he's the super. Like, are you, like, moving in here or something? Like, are you... Like, I, I, this is, like, twice... Are you friends? You staying with someone? It's, yeah, friends with a couple guys here. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah, who? Oh, yeah, do you know uh, Frank? Uh, I mean, yeah, 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 I know Frank, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? You guys hang out, or what do you know about him? Uh, no, no, I mean, we don't hang out or anything. The guy's like, like 70 or something. He doesn't really hang out with, (laughs) no, I mean, I've seen him wave to him, you know, like, no, I mean, he's fine. He's he's a writer dude or something, I think. I don't, I don't know. Like, I mean, he, uh, he hangs out with like. Uh, like Kurt and like Maddie sometimes, but not, no, um, I, okay. I mean, yeah. All right. I mean, I've only been here for a bit, but what do you think of the place? You like it? Um, I mean, it's a quick bus ride from campus and it's cheap for the three of us. So uh, better than a dorm, I guess. I I don't know. Sure. Quieter. at least, yeah. Yeah, but um, you might see me around. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Agent Inferno, uh, what is your human? 61. Okay. He, you're, you're definitely kind of getting an odd vibe from him a bit. Like he's, um, like especially when you asked him, like, how is this place? You definitely kind of got like a, you know, he, he you could you could see in his body language he got a little little guarded, uh, but at the same time he's just kind of hanging. Um, he's like, okay, yeah, so yeah, all right. Um, I'm Ben, by the way. And he yeah, Luca holds out a hand. Uh, all right, Luca. Yeah, all right. Um, yeah, man, I like your mustache. That's that I I can't grow one, but it's nice, man. That's it's not growing as well here anymore. Oh. Um, did something happen? Like a bit of a cut. It's all good though. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. I mean, it's still better than mine. Like I can't even like the guys like, like Fitzy, he just says, <laughs> says I should pour some milk on it and let a cat lick it off or something. Um, <laughs> but you know, anyhow. Um, okay. Yeah. So we, uh, we gotta go. I gotta get the, I gotta get to campus. Uh, and you can see the other two guys come up and they like kind of look at you kind of up and down, you two Fuller. And you can tell that one of them kind of looks over at you Fuller and they, they kind of make a face. Um, like they're kind of assessing you and they have found you wanting as college age kids <laughs> can sometimes do. It's fine. It's fine. And then the three of them uh, start start moving out. Uh, they bump past Weaver uh, on the steps uh, and then they kind of continue off in the direction of a bus stop. Anything else that you guys are wanting to do? So Fuller was wanting to look at the um, mailboxes. So we've seen um, a reference to a Maddie. Um, And so she would be, you know, kind of seeing if there's names by mailboxes to see if she can see, like, is Maddie like Madison or like, what is Maddie short for? And trying to be nosy about uh, that because we've got one name and now we're trying to figure out who the other person is. Okay. Um, hmm. So roll a luck test. Actually, let's see if let's see if it's if there's names on these boxes or if it's just apartment numbers. Maddie yeah, looks yeah, like Miss Morangello, is she? 
No, no it's Mary. Uh, okay. not that you know. Of. Mary, got it. Yeah, okay. the that is Mary Elizabeth Moran Morangello. Morgello. Morgello. <laughs> Morgello. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry, Aunt Ray. I'm so sorry. I have Aunt Ray. I, I did keep that down. Really? Somewhere, wild. somewhere she's rolling over in her grave. Like, oh, my goodness. Uh, how did you, how's, 50, that, how's that look? 51 on the luck roll. Uh, yeah, you just see, there's just, there's just uh, apartment numbers. That's all you see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Fuller then would sort of go out where Weaver is, um, as Inferno's kind of chatting up the college bro dudes, um, okay. and Fuller would go where Weaver is kind of hanging out outside, um, and she's going to be like, so we're, we're going to have a chat with, um, and she sort of does the air quotes, Agent Ray, right? Yeah, I think she's on her way. Yeah. Oh, God, there you are. <laughs> Okay. Did before Agent Ray does arrive, uh, la, the, any, anything else that you, the three of you wanted to do before that happens? I would um, imagine we're contemplating that we want to go to the bookstore, but then this other person showed up, and so it's like sure. maybe we'll hold off going to the bookstore because that's curious. So you know, maybe we'll yeah figure that out first, and then okay, uh, okay. So if that's the case. No one else has anything they wanted to do. We'll say Agent Ray. You descend the stairs and you see lingering outside of the apartment building on the step are the three people that you encountered when you first arrived at Kurt Winter's apartment. How do you want to handle this? Uh, she walks up to them and uh, as she approaches now in, in sort of the sunny day, uh, you can tell that like, even though she's like brown skinned and, and Indian, like she definitely looks kind of like tanned and sunny. <laughs> uh, like like she's been spending a lot of time on the beach or by the pool or something like that. <laughs> and uh, as, as she walks up, um, uh, good morning. Thank you for waiting. Hi, F uh, FBI, I heard. That's right, Agent Isha Ray. You can call me Agent Ray. Hi, Agent Ray, I, I'm Luca. Hi. My name is me, ooh, and you, and she will shake each of their hands. You're looking into Frank, friend of ours. Uh, before, before she answers you, she's going to pointedly look at uh, both uh, uh, Melissa's character and Ash's character and shake their heads. Uh, Fuller. Fuller? Mrs. Fuller? Yeah, and uh, you can call me Fuller's Blair. Fine. Blair. Blair, Luca, and Ms. Fuller. Sir, Mr. Uh, Lu I'm sorry, Luca, you had asked me a question. Yeah, you're, you're looking into Frank. Is there something about him? Nothing that I can divulge you. In, but, uh, really? We're friends That's of right. Ronnie. Do you, do you know him? And at this, she kind of like... Yeah. Ronnie Lightside? Maybe we should find somewhere to chat. Maybe yeah, you want to not stand right uh, here. Yes, that and, is an excellent idea. And uh, she kind of right? gestures to this car uh, down the road. And she's like, uh, that's my rental. We can go there if you want. Why don't we go get something to eat? And she looks at Fuller and Dante. Maybe that diner we were at? That, that's... Let's do that. <laughs> the Perkins? Yeah, you guys can go to the Perkins. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> we go back it's open. Too. It's open. It's fine. <laughs> Make it a, you, know, you don't have to do an appointment or anything. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Four of you head over. No problem. You can do that. Uh, so, uh, having the conversation, um, so you know Frank as Ronnie Lightside? That means that you are at least aware of the program. Or are you with the program? Uh, we're... Yeah. And Fuller's gonna throw out, like, a number of years. 
because she's a veteran, so she's been around for a bit, and so she's just gonna and, and you can see her kind of not praising me because she is also a veteran, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so she knows. Um, there, there, there's a little bit of a <laughs> was there a reason a praising that, that, that's happening here yeah, from yeah. Folder to Ray? Like there's there's a, there's a there's sizing up that's happening right now. Uh, <laughs> was there a reason you opted to go for a personal connection with Frank Ritter? Um, and at this, I think we just look at, <laughs> at Dante. <laughs> I, I simply assume that if you had a uh, veteran with you, perhaps you would approach things differently. Of course, that is not for me to say this is a personal investigation. For me, if you are conducting this as part of cell operations, then I will not. It's not away. official. Uh, we were meeting up to debrief when he was hit by the car. Um, how, how did he die? Um, oh, so, uh, well, I would like to do a search around just to make sure nobody's, uh, listening in or watching or anything like that. Since we did sort of go back to the scene of the crime. Um, well, so are you at the Perkins? Or are you at the bagel shop? Those are two separate locations. Oh, There's the good Gales, point. Yes, Perkins, Perkins, Perkins. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay. Do you still want to do? I could remember. I, I do. I do still always want to make sure that we don't have any alertness. Okay. Your, what is your alertness? My alertness is forty, so okay. I'm going to snag an audience to get it to fifty, so it's at least a half and half here. Sure. That's fine. Oh, mm. yeah, fifty. Wait, yes, fifteen. Sorry. That's me. 15 under 15. You are looking around. You're trying to get a sense. The it is it is a weekday. And it is later in the morning, as you all had a, a late start because of it's almost actually it's, it's more lunchtime, really, um, at this point. And so there is a, a decent crowd in here of various folk, a handful of definitely what looks like college aid students, some of whom seem to be studying. And then there is just like just normal folk here popping in. And as you're looking around and you're eyeing and you're eyeing, and you're looking, you have a start as you see over in one of this dark corner of the restaurant, there is a booth with, um, a shan like they all have like these, like those chandeliers, not chandeliers, like the lights that kind of drop over top yeah. of them. This mm -hmm. one is off. And you can see as you as you look up, there's just this dark shadow where that that booth is. And as you're watching, you can see just this. There's no one sitting there, just this black, dark shadow. But as you're watching, you see slowly emerging from that black shadow. You see the face of an old, wrinkled, grinning woman. And her mouth just begins to grow wide. And you can see it starts to open. These crooked teeth begin to reveal themselves. She goes to open her mouth. And right as it looks like she's about to cackle, you hear the crash of dishes from the kitchen. And you turn and you look instinctively. And you look back. The light flickers back on in the booth. It is still empty, but you can very much see there's no one in it. Go ahead and roll sand. Oh, you're yes. the only one who notices. Everyone else obviously hears the dishes crashing, but you're the only one who notices this, Fuller. And I would almost like to imagine that Fuller sort of went to like hit someone else and like maybe like knocked over like a glass of water on the table because she's just trying to look and like get somebody's attention mm -hmm. while like it's happening. And she's <laughs> <just> like, <laughs> you accidentally right cross the new Agent Ray right in the face. <laughs> Agent Ray pulls her gun and you start shooting right here. And or that was the end of our campaign. Start. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> How'd you do? Uh, that's a 79 oh, over 52 for the sand roll. That's a fail. one point of sand loss as this okay. start happens. And and also, don't we should remind folks, it is first time my trade's with us. If you suffer sand, you can always push it off in the bonds and such if that's the desire. Uh, so there's always that. Uh, okay. So that happens. You guys see Fuller 
reach out, knock a glass of water over and reach out and we'll say grabs, um, it's going to grab you, you agent Inferno. You can feel her like kind of grab your arm and then the crash happens. All of you look and then Fuller, you look back to that booth and it is brightly lit as any other table and there is nobody in it. What do you do? That's what you grab and you spill in the water. What I? Oh gosh! Oh oh oh! I'm so sorry. Um, the ring, Miss No. Um. 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 Oh, so, anyways. <laughs> we've we've had some. Um. We've. Yes. There's the. So. There's been. It's so a fuller will kind of go into kind of the description of kind of what we learned so far about the nightmares um, that yeah. Kurt was having and that were shared with Ronnie slash Ryder um, and interjects inf- with how he was before our original mission, how Lisa or Weaver had noticed that he was tired and like jumpy um, and then uh, she kind of like looks to Fuller to explain what happened, like what was seen when before the car crash. Yeah, and Fuller will definitely kind of drop her voice at that point that everyone else seems to have just seen a car crash and that he just stepped off in front of the van. But that's not all that there was to see. There was a woman. And he was arguing with this woman. She and was that's... grinning. Yeah. And Fuller sort of looks back to that corner again. Yes, she... Yes. And Luca, you guys saw her again, right? Yeah, I saw her on the street. I saw her coming down the elevator. She's haunted me. And our, our other partner... Uh, Price, he's still sleeping. Price, yeah, yeah. Arnold Price. I mean, I don't. We call him Vin. It yes, Agent <laughs> Arnold. And and she kind of yes. like I thought he'd be a retired. No. Yeah, he, uh, well, he was almost dead, but that's a different story. Um, sorry, uh. You saw uh, Ronnie die. Yeah, it was awful. Listen, this was, is fucking was, weird. Was was he um was he alone? Uh, I'm Fuller in in Price. We're we're with him in his last moments. He he was already. I, I, I mean, yes, the the woman and him, and when I, um, medically trained, I he was already was, by the time we got bad. out. Yeah, I'll I'll save you the yeah. description yeah. of yeah, but it was I, uh, instantaneous. We'll have I, to ask Price, but he he was. He whispered some things before he. So Price was with him, and Fuller, you were as well. Well, oh, we were, yes, he was I'd... supposed to meet us for our debrief. Yes, that's right. Oh, um, right. Yes. Um, uh, <laughs> I suppose that's all any of us can can ask for, right? Is that we aren't alone when it happens. Um. He, he had not been looking well. No, I... Something is very definitely going on. Um, I... My, my name is Ijure, and uh, Ronnie knew me by a different alias when we worked together. And I, at the time, had worked with Asian price as as well, um, and um, 
So you're gonna that help was, us put this to bed, ago. right? Uh, yes. I, I was actually going to ask if you would help me put this to bed. Uh, but I suppose it doesn't matter what help, what direction the help goes. But, uh, I, I came to town just for this. I am... Who was running to you? Who are you directing this to? And to all of you. Well, um, first our handler. Then we got to know him a bit. Is your handler good? He, uh, we, uh... It's always been good to people. Luca and uh, Dante and I actually met him at the same same place. There's some freaky shit happening in Florida. Um, Ronnie, right. actually, he told me to kill a man, and I I did. And and, and she looks down and... and you have uh, to bring that up, Lisa. Jesus. Pretty, pretty clear that she's when probably you, had a similar experience. When you do something, like... I was normal then, and... He was my partner, for God's sakes. He can't walk anymore. And it's at that moment that a server comes up to you all with, like, getting ready to take careers. Okay, what kind of... I'll give you some time. And she turns Thank away and you. walks, and she kind of looks back at Agent Weaver. <laughs> yeah. <that's> <laughs> and she's, like, crying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. He's still... He's he, not dead. No, of course not. Oh my god. Oh, I feel awful still, but that's a little better. And uh, I'm sorry. Ray, you're you're not too far behind us. This just I how how did you know to come? Uh here? that that's just part yeah, of that's, uh that that's, that's part weird. Of, yeah, that that is part of what is um what is odd? Uh, be before I I tell you, I I need to ask. Um, have any of you received any emails in the last day or two about Frank Ritter? Not Ronnie Lightside about Frank. We Ritter. didn't even realize that Frank Ritter existed before yesterday. All right. Um. Um. I this this. This may be targeted then, uh, because I got an obituary for Frank Redder uh, at six sixteen p.m. yesterday evening. A.M. Uh, A.M. Pardon me, which was he, from that, what that Kirk Winter make... says several hours before no. he passed. What, I mean, we can tell you we saw you, and Fuller is unreasonably like upset. Like I told you, we saw it with our own eyes. It happened after that. Yes. Uh, I'm additionally concerned because one, I got this several hours before uh, he died. And uh, secondly, it it was sent to all of my emails, my fake FBI one that I have for the program as well as uh, multiple others related to my life outside of the program and I do have an RSS feed for certain names and that did not pop up in my feed. The writer for the obituary was Kurt Winters um, who was the gentleman that we were just the apartment of, but he he says he has no knowledge of it. And, he, uh, he's not green. No, I um, he was I did not distraught. He 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 knew he knew nothing. Mm -hmm. No, he, do you share? He did not. Do you like share the, the actual view? I, I, I do. And at this okay. point, I will... <laughs> I feel like my... Fuller fairly rudely, if you, like, pulled your phone out to, like, pull the email, oh, no, she no, kind no. of would have just, like... Piece of paper uh, with oh. uh, 
the obituary from her messenger bag and she puts it on the table. Okay. So like, this this is what I got. I shared it with you guys if you uh, up on the up on Foundry. In addition to this, as Agent Ray is asking questions of you all about getting emails and such, Weaver, you feel yeah, a vibration in your pocket. And when you look at it, it is the burner phone. It's not your own. It's the burner phone that you had sent a text yeah. to, to Merlin. And it's not a it's not a phone call. It's a text that comes back to you. And it says, you can stop testing me now. I get it. I know how it works. And that's it. Meanwhile, the, uh, the bit is in front of you. I'm going to read it so that people in the audience can hear it. So it says, yep. Frank Ryder dead. It's the headline. Then the, then the line underneath, reclusive writer's life finally catches up with his career. Frank Ryder, 63, met an unremarkable end in Wilmington, North Carolina, struck by a car in a mundane tragedy befitting his recent years of obscurity. Once a celebrated science fiction and thriller novelist, Ryder's brilliance dimmed with his last publication two decades ago, leaving behind only sisters in a world that had long since moved on. His life, a solitary journey through fantastic realms of his own creation, ended on a note as pedestrian as his later years. Today, we remember him not for the manner of his passing, but for the fleeting luminance of his early work. Ryder's story, marked by the cruel ebb of fame and fortune, leaves a legacy of caution in its wake, reminding us of the impermanence of renown, the endurance of sorrow, and the inevitability of death. In lieu of flowers, send nothing, for that is what he was worth. And then underneath it, contributed by Kurt Winter, staff writer for the Wilmington Star News. As uh, Asia Ray puts this on the table, it is visible that she is trying not to have a much angrier reaction than she is having. Uh, she kind of clenches her jaw and tries to stifle a scowl, and it probably doesn't go very well. Um, but uh, she puts this, that down. Oh, that oh, and <laughs> and Fuller is uh, just apoplectic. It's just thing the that seems language to be true in that is that the endurance of sorrow part, because certainly people feel sorrowful about this. Also, I did not know he had sisters. And if so I So that that's what Weaver, you I I had I had I think I'd blocked out the final minutes there. But sisters, that's what he that's what he whispered to Price. Something about sisters. It's the sisters Dangerous. Ron, Ronnie told you about his sisters. I, it, it, I, I, the gasps, final words. It was just. Oh, I see. Okay. Sisters. I, I no, dangerous. Um, Does he have sisters? I wouldn't know. Hmm. And Lisa is gonna just attempt to call again. With the with the burner phone, mm -hmm. same thing, same amount of rings, goes to a voicemail, no name, just identifies the number, and then as you as the beep happens, it says the voicemail is full and it automatically hangs up on you. This time, I think she's gonna spam call it two more times. Okay, two more times, the same exact thing. same result. Yeah, and then this time she's gonna she's gonna text. And be like, Merlin, really? Fucking call me, Declan. Okay. And you send that you send that text message out? No problem. Uh Ray will uh while while the calls are happening, will ask them. Um I had gone to his apartment to just do a cursory search and uh somebody like Frank would very definitely have a stash and or a journal or something 
please tell me that is all with you because if not, somebody else has got their hands on it and that is the problem. No, please we've... tell me it was you. We've got it. We we definitely collected um, yeah. s- several. You guys things. have it on you. I'm not. We're not anything that you guys would have. Vin doesn't have it. You guys have it. So yeah, yeah. you would have it. Yep. Um, so I'll share it again with uh, with the group. Though I think it's in that same handout folder that uh, the Wilmington handouts. Uh, but you I'm, can see excerpts. I'm staying at um, I'm I'm staying at a hotel by the airport. Um, if you are finished with most of this, I would just like to take my time to read his journalism. Yeah, yeah we can we'll, we'll share. settle that later. Um, I So, after we eat, we're going to go to a bookstore. Um, there's a novel that we're looking for that was frequently referenced that he didn't have in his own personal collection. Um, but we're hoping that maybe he put in an order already uh, for this book to be uh, picked up. What book? Uh, let me... You actually got the name of the book specifically from the text messages uh, that yes. you reviewed. Yes, the terror that comes in the night. That's correct. That yep. yeah. does something Ray knows? Or knows of? Uh, no, I don't see any reason. Like you're... Okay. What's your field? Like you're, you're, you're NASA right now. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you would have. Yeah. Probably wouldn't. You're yeah. NASA? <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> that Melissa thinks it's cool. Yeah. Who's Melissa? NASA. You know Melissa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so what's the plan now? So we'll say pleasantries are out of the way. We've exchanged some information. Um, all of you do see this a bit. It is pretty scathing. And it is published. All of you can see, at the very least, the printed paper that she gave you does suggest it was earlier than his actual death, which is extraordinarily curious, right? Uh, what's the next next step for the four Do of you, we'll say? Do any of the times in the text messages um, coincide with that 616 time? Like, did... Uh, no, no. I mean, they're all pretty... They're all usually you can you can tell they're all within about a four hour window. It seems like the text from Merlin's side, anytime they ever come in, always come in usually between like a like a twelve and a five o'clock Eastern time. Okay. Uh, you never see any anything come earlier than that. You never see anything co- come in later than that. It's always within that window, and you can also tell that there's usually no more than like two or three texts per day at most. But there's also huge gaps in between when they come. Um, your phone that you specifically have, uh, there's only maybe like a, a couple weeks worth of a, a history with it. It's not, the, it's not like it goes back months. It's just a few weeks old. So. Gotcha. Okay. And Bookstore. you do not get an immediate response from the text that you send. So what would you all like to do? Let's work offside a bit. Been at the apartment for a while now. We've got a bookstore and a key to a storage. We could split Avzies. It really, I, I get getting his obituary so far in advance means that it was either premeditated murder or some kind of precognition. I, I. And it was sent to everywhere that I specifically would see it. This was something I was meant to see. Did you tell Kurt about it? Did he actually write it? Sounds a bit two faced. He does does know. not. He has no memory of his, and and I have no reason to think he was lying. I well, asked him I mean, about who it. else has access to his information? I, I, that was one of the things I asked. He said only his tech guys. He doesn't have like a laptop or anything that he brought back with him. Did not he have that, a partner, a that girlfriend, that I asked a boyfriend? Not that, I, not that I saw. He does have a girlfriend in the building, um, Maddie. 
And uh, yeah, she wasn't home. Uh, he was banging on her door when we first told him, and she didn't appear to be home. I tried looking at the mailboxes, but there were only apartment numbers, no name, so I'm not sure who exactly Maddie is, but she did seem to also be friends with Frank. Getting uh, getting any tech work done with the newspaper, that's going to... that That's above what a fake badge can do. And talking with authority, that's going to need an actual warrant. If but we, you can talk to Maddie at least. I I can talk to Maddie, and I and Kurt still believes I'm uh, FBI. So, but uh, if we want to look at his work email, uh, we will have to think of maybe how to get in there under cover of night. But. Uh, I'm I'm I am okay to do that. I, I and again she she looks at Fuller. She's like I don't know how you guys operate here. So if you if you want to do that, you I I will. You know, at some point, uh, it it appears that someone somewhere wanted to make sure that you knew. Someone somewhere probably figured you would come here after receiving this information. So someone's got a leg up on us, knows more than we do. We're playing catch up. We're coming from behind. So um, Luke yeah. has got keys. Uh, some of us should go check that out. Some of us should go figure this book out and talk to the bookstore. Uh, I would like to go to the bookstore. Uh, okay. That's all right. Yeah, I'll go to the storage unit. Yeah, I'll go with you to the bookstore. All right, top row, bottom row. Okay. Um, we'll say that you've probably spent an hour or two together going over things uh, here, and so we'll say it's early afternoon. Uh, still a little overcast, but otherwise a very late, fairly nice day. And we'll say you split off. You don't have to be too precise in terms of how you get where you're going. Um, we'll start with those of you that are going to the um, to what you all would know is a green box by now. We store yeah. you. <laughs> and here is where we we go off the rails. Ah, okay. <laughs> Fuller's so, like, yeah, this is great. This is this yeah. First time. Or, <laughs> first time for her. It's gonna be exciting for you. So <laughs> The two of you um, get through, no problem. You have a key, et cetera, et cetera. Like, it's not hard to find the specific box. And it, again, is, and it's a small storage space. Uh, it is probably about 10 feet deep and maybe about 10 feet high and about 10 feet wide. It's a fairly kind of cube-like shape as you go in. And there, as you pull up the uh, kind of the garage-like door, uh, we'll say that... It's the middle of the day. There are other people here. And so you can hear folks kind of messing around with their own. No one immediately next to you. Uh, but you can go inside and you can see much like other green boxes that you've been in. It is filled with various things. Uh, there's looks like boxes, furniture, filing cabinets. Uh, looks like there's various stacks of magazines and file folders. Uh, you can see some boxes look to be cardboard. Some are more like these plastic containers that are stacked upon each other. Then you have just freestanding to any untrained eye would look like trash that some hoarder could possibly have collected. But that is not you. You all are trained professionals. So uh, both of you, what are your searches? 74. Okay. Fuller? 60. You, fantastic. Is there... Anything in particular that you're looking for before I just start giving you some th interesting finds? Initial things would be anything useful um, gun-wise or yeah, something like weapons that. Weapons and stuff? Yeah. Uh, okay. So you're looking for like weapons and things like that. What about uh, you, Agent Fuller? 
Um, Fuller, I think specifically, um, I know Weaver and Ray went to look for the book um, at the bookstore and to chat with the bookstore guy, but um, Fuller also wouldn't mind finding the book here if it happens to be here. Um, so that's probably the first thing that she would be kind of looking for books and that book specifically. Okay. So few things. Uh, you don't notice anywhere in the in the entirety of this box. And I'm going to say this is going to take the two of you. You have very good searches. So it's probably going to say about two hours if you combing through all of this. And in doing so, at no point do you actually ever find any weapons in here. Now, you do remember, Inferno, that you have a bag of a handful of guns that was behind his his closet. But you actually don't see any weapons in here. Uh, you do find what appear to be like marine style, military style binoculars uh, of some age. Like they don't look recent. They look very, very old and uh, at least maybe 40, 50 years old, something like that. Uh, if you had to put a time on it, it's definitely like Korea, Vietnam, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s era kind of stuff. Um, that's something you noticed. You notice that there is a, there are a, a stack of these silhouettes, these target practice silhouettes, like, um, like man shaped, um, that are stacked, uh, and essentially tacked to every wall within the green box. You can see like they're kind of hanging out almost like, not sure if like they're just hanging up there for insulation, but there's one after the other, after the other, none of them have any bullet holes or anything in them, but they certainly appear like the types of things you might see at a shooting range. Um, there, there is strangely enough, um, a wooden crate that you find that has 100 pairs of, um, of men's cotton crew socks. Uh, you're looking specifically for manuscripts and, uh, and books and things you <laughs> find, uh, tucked underneath all of those socks, agent fuller. Uh, you find what looks to be a manuscript of some kind unpublished. So it's like pieced together. It's a big stack of these worn papers. And like, there's those small kind of little kind of like brass connectors that it's, yeah. uh, you can, yeah. it's connecting the mm -hmm. whole punches. Um, it appears to be an unpublished autobiography by, uh, the for by a former Mexican president, uh, Lazaro Cardenas. Um, and you can see that the top leaf of it, the very top page has his autograph. Uh, you, as you're looking around, um, again, agent in front of you, you've been kind of looking specifically for, um, for like weapons and things or anything kind of weapon related. Uh, you do find, um, a section of the, of the green box that has a radiator in the corner. Like it's just an actual radiator. It's not connected to anything. It's like someone detached an old fashioned radiator from an apartment somewhere and have placed it in here. And you can see that it is very dented, very dirty, very old. And there is half of a pair of handcuff, uh, handcuffs that are clipped to it. Uh, like somebody had been locked to it. Um, and you can see that the other half of the handcuff uh, it's on the ground. It's got these dried blood stains and these various tufts of hair. Um, you also find, I'll say, Agent Inferno, uh, as you're pulling, going through some boxes, there is a a, a top hat, uh, a very nice looking one. It is a hat with this like this white stripe across the uh, across the the brow, like right across the middle. No manufacturer on the inside, uh, but you do see there is a name on the inside of it, heavy D. Um, it is extraordinarily high quality. Uh, despite the fact that the box that is in is very, very dirty and everything else in here is covered in dust. Um, okay. Uh, so there's that. And then I would like both of you to roll a luck test. I quite love green boxes. They're literally just like... <laughs> this is all of the things that are in them. <laughs> Weirdness. These are all totally, the interesting things. Totally. There's plenty of other things that are just like, whoa, this is, this is nothing. <laughs> it's like, why is, there a, why is there a table leg in here? That's weird. Uh, okay, let me know the numbers. Not, it's not so much if you pass or fail. Who's got... Who had... Me. Okay. All right. 
Uh, so does that mean Fuller? You had the you you had thirty four. Is that right? Thirty four. Yeah. Okay. Um, Fuller, uh, the two of you have split this up. You're on one side of the green box, and you find like kind of tucked underneath a pile of things, uh, rags and such. You find what appears to be a severed female hand. Uh, it appears uh, as you look at it. And it makes sense that you would find it. You're a medical professional and you can very quickly and easily see that it appears to have been gnawed off at the wrist. Go ahead and roll a sand test as you, oh gosh, as you oh, pull my. some things across and there it is. What? Like she just saw like crew socks and a mm -hmm. shirt and like a manuscript. And now that, what? Oh gosh. Uh, no, oh, that's a crit fail 77. Take three points of sand loss as this was Yo, a D3. Crap. Now remember, you can push it off oh. on the bonds, if you like. I uh, yes. Is that for um, violence, Jeff? Uh, yeah. Oh, hold on. I need to say go. Okay, I'm keeping an eye on my breaking point. Um. Uh, actually, asking that question made me think about mm -hmm. it. Um. So I will. Yes. So I have a. One of my bonds is uh, Dr. Robin Albert's chief medical officer, chief mm -hmm. medical examiner. Um, so I'm going to say that kind of the way that she's going to try to push this off is just getting real like intellectualizing about it. Um, and so just kind of trying to like kind of have that initial reaction of like, oh, but hell is this thing and then sort of just going into the like what would dr alberts have said and about sort of like level of decomposition and the um looking you know examining the wounds and like that appears mm -hmm. to be bite marks and like just trying to intellectually go through the rest of it and kind of push that off that way okay uh so i think you need to roll for to see how much willpower you spend was it a, is it a deep four it's a D4. I believe it's a D4. That sounds yeah. right. So that's what I'm going to do. So Go ahead and roll a D4. If I'm wrong. Perfect. I rolled a three. So spend, you can spend three points of willpower and you can pass off three of those sanity points. So you don't take any sanity loss, but you do lose some willpower in the process. Okay. okay. And then my bond with a uh, score mm -hmm. with Dr. Alberts goes down by three. Excellent. So okay. I'll tell you what, while you're, since, since you, you've already said you're doing it, if you would like to roll like a medicine test here um, or forensics, either one of those would be fine. Um, I, uh, I would yeah, ask for a roll because better. it did just trigger off oh, a yeah. crit fail. So I, I, I'm i going to say make the roll itself mm -hmm. and we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I'm not going to take any bonus for this. I'm going to roll it straight. Uh, 56 under 64. Hell so yes. I did succeed. You look at the hand and you look over in the corner where Inferno had a little while ago unearthed this old radiator radiator with a handcuff and some blood and a tuft of hair. And you think that maybe they are a matching pair uh, as there are some, which you think are abrasions and some discoloration on the wrist, which is old, by the way, this is, this is not like this hand is, is recent, but you can tell it looks like there might've been some bruising, against the against the, the hand itself and some discoloration that might commonly come with like like a exposure of like metal and such to the skin for too long and you would be able to kind of piece that together so she, she's imagining sort of someone like pulling on a handcuffed wrist would kind of cause mm -hmm. that kind of damage and then agent inferno you are um you're looking around as well and you find a in like this, this sort of middle portion in the back, there is this small little, uh, it's like a kitchenette almost in a way. Um, and as you start going through it, you realize it's actually stocked with food, um, relatively high quality food. You open it up and it's got power. It's plugged in. You see, it's like a, like a small refrigerator, so to speak. And there's all these like steaks, shrimp, etc. And there appears to be some, booze uh, that's on top of the kitchenette itself you also notice that sitting on one of the uh, the levels 
on the shelves inside of this, as you open it up, uh, there are these, these little kind of jars of caviar and you notice one other thing that catches your attention. There is a strange green metal dodecahedron about the size of a chestnut that is laying right there on that, uh, on that shelf. And that is what you see. Go closer to that chestnut looking thing. Take a look. Uh, again, it's not that big. Okay. And as you look at it, it's metal. Yeah, you're hundred percent sure. Uh, you can tell that like it does, it looks in startlingly perfect condition. You don't see a scratch. You don't see a scrape. Uh, it, it certainly has like no blemishes that you can kind of tend, uh, uh, tend to. Now, uh, you can give me a roll. Um, I would say you don't have anything like sciences or anything like that, do you? Well, this um, thing would be pharmacy or forensics. Um, you can give me a forensic or you can just give me an int in times five. Just do an int times five. Okay. We'll see what you got. Oh, good crit fails are coming in today. Yeah, they are. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> hey, it's better now than during, uh, during a combat or something like that. Uh, so true, you true. notice... Um. Hmm. Okay. You do notice, and you kind of almost get slightly trance-like as you do so. There is a small hole. Now that you're looking at it a little bit more closely, and maybe at some point you don't even realize this, but you reached your hand and you picked it up, and it's now sitting in your hand. And you're just kind of bringing it closer and staring at it. It's kind of heavy in your hand as well. Might be a kind of an alloy of a, a few different metals as you're holding it and you're looking at it and you realize as like the overhead incandescent light that is actually no we'll say uh halogen lights and stuff you're moving it around it's doing kind of odd things with shadows like the reflections in it are a little bit odd doesn't quite match up and as you're doing that the fuller you would hear this as well the two of you hear and you hear the garage door uh into this storage unit suddenly crash the lights go out everything goes dark both of you hear heavy breathing <sighs> as you hear this subtle quiet laughter <laughs> And Fuller just doing? loudly says, nope, nope, nope. And she like reaches into her bag and she's got one of those small um, flashlights. Mm -hmm. And so she's just very loud. No, 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 no. And she put, puts the flashlight on and she's like looking you around put the all the flashlight on. As you put it up, the minute you put it up, there is literally inches from your face, this hideous old crone that you saw on the, the street, fighting, harassing Ronnie. And it is literally inches from your face. And she's like, ah! and you see these gnarled old long fingernails reach out as a hand grabs you from either side and brings you in. Ah! And you drop the light. Real sand. Oh, yes, I do. Holy crap. Oh, 18 under 48. Okay, take one point of sand loss. Oh, gosh. You drop the light, it shatters to the ground, Inferno, you hear the shattering, and you just hear like, <laughs> it's kind of quiet, light. and suddenly the light flickers back on above, and you look around, and you can see there is Agent Inferno, or excuse me, there is Agent Fuller on the ground, it's kind of scrambling, in a very familiar position that you would know from your elevator experience on the ground. Inferno, do me a favor, and I know you have a very high alertness, but roll it anyway. Okay. 95 over 70, I failed. Okay. You, as you're looking in her direction, you see that the light is kind of casting her shadow on the ground. 
and it sort of looks a little odd is it almost looks like Fuller has this big hump on the back of her, uh, like on the back of her shoulder. You're just kind of looking at it and then it suddenly moves on its own while Fuller is still kind of in this, this sort of position. And then as Fuller grabs her, her flashlight and, and steps up, it dissipates, goes away. You're right, Fuller. No, no, that that was that was just the same for, from the 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 in, in the corner at the restaurant and the the she was right here, right freaking here. And she's just looking right. That that what you 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 had the dream, right? Same woman. It wasn't a dream. I was awake, but yeah. I, I guess I could see what I looked like when it happened. That, that that's who Ronnie. That we're gonna have to get this figured out because he he was having the nightmares of this, and Kurt was having the nightmares of this, and now you and Price and it's it's spreading. The shit is spreading. We've got to figure this and and then sort of unceremoniously she just like picks up this hand and kind of shoves it in his face and there's a hand there's a freaking hand yeah yeah i push it away just get... it there's a there's handcuffs in the box and the hand and she's just not sure exactly what she's doing with this hand but she's just sort of walking the hand over to where the handcuffs are like it the because she's a, a bit distressed that the hand wasn't where the handcuffs are. Like the handcuffs and the radiator are in one part of the box. And mm -hmm. the hand that looks like it went with the handcuffs and the radiator, it was not in the same part of the box. And that's upsetting to her. And she's not exactly sure what to do with that upset at the moment. But she's just fumbling with this little handcuffs and the that just and then she just tries to collect herself what did what did what did you find luca all sorts of things top hat binoculars a pocket <laughs> the nice little gemstone i found with okay. the metal maybe grab a can of booze and caviar okay what Pirate stuff yeah the good stuff. Like Glenn Levitt stuff. I find a dead a hand and you find freaking caviar in a top. What? The, and she's just looking. What the going on? What? And as but you I just find that, this. As you say that, by the way, and you hold it up, you hear <laughs> as the garage door for this uh, for the storage unit opens up. And you're like, I found this. And you hear the sounds of other people down the hall this way and that as once more light from not just overhead, but from the open door floods into the compartment. So Look, luckily the this at that point was the manuscript and not the hand. <laughs> so yeah. she's kind of like holding up the book and then kind of looking around. And so um, as that happens, we're going to go ahead and cut over for a bit to Agent Ray and Agent Weaver. Uh, who we see currently getting out of a car in a relatively mundane looking strip mall. Uh, it is a handful of empty, uh, of empty lots here and there. You can see a couple of places have gone out of business uh, left and right. Uh, but ultimately you can see that there's, there's other places here. You can see like an insurance company for all state. You can see like a Chinese, Chinese food restaurant. Uh, you can see a, like a, what looks to be like some kind of fabric store. But you find uh, in, the, in the small little corner, and it is small, uh, there's no signage up on, uh, up on like the banner, but there is on the, like the, the signs by the, by the edge of the street, you do see Nagel's books. Uh, and you, in fact, uh, do find the glass door, Nagel's books, again, written on it, really, really kind of pedestrian looking iconography. Got the hours listed on it. You are well within them. You look in the window and you can tell, like, really, you can only see through the door itself. 
because on either side of this relatively narrow lot in this strip mall, the windows that flank the door are stacked with books and you can't even see in. Do you go inside? Yep. Okay. Uh, Ray goes in. Weaver, are you going in too? Uh, yeah, Weaver's going okay. in. All right. You go inside and you can tell immediately this is an independent bookstore. You can see it has very much the feel of a hoarder's closet as there are books from floor to ceiling, uh, sacked in all manner of ways. And right as you walk in, you can see off to the side, um, in the corner, there is a small man, uh, very, very thin. He's got a kind of a shaggy looking beard. You can certainly tell he's kind of in his fifties. He is sort of swept back his hair somewhat in this kind of wind swept crazy man look that I'm going to go for in about 15 years. And he's got in his hand a cigarette and there's an ashtray and he's just like smoking. And there's a little thing as the door opens up, but he doesn't even respond. And he is clearly on a computer. Uh, and the two of you can see that it looks like he has like a couple different small windows up and there's like eBay bids and stuff that are going on. What would you like to do? Um, Lisa's going to approach him. Uh, hi, I'm here to pick up an order. Uh, what? Uh, uh, hey, what? Uh, an order. Uh, okay. Uh, uh. Wait, um, do you got like a, uh, you got like an order number? I don't, it's for uh, my friend Frank Ryder. Uh, no, I don't know. I'm not sure if he actually put it in or not, or if I need to place the book order. Um, uh, no, I, I know Frank. Um, no, I don't, I, I, I don't think he, he ordered anything recently. Okay. Um, could I then order, or do you have uh, on file the terror that comes in the night? Uh, um, uh, maybe. Uh, you need. To, uh, do I need to do this now? I'm kind of watching these uh, these oh. bids. They're closing down in the next like like ten. Oh, minutes. I love bids. What are you bidding on? Oh, uh, just a couple rare ones here and there. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, take your time. I'll I'll just I'll browse if that's fine. Uh, yeah. Ah, oh, god damn it. And he looks down, puts the cigarette in his mouth. He's like, ah, freaking someone, these little, these fucking shitheads who get on these auctions in like the last 10 minutes and they just throw bids up after bids up after bids up while, oh. while real collectors like me have been watching this thing the whole time, putting in reasonable bids, reasonable bid under, under offer, but reasonable. And they just <sighs> jack the price up. Over and over, they don't even realize that they're freaking bidding against themselves. It's ridiculous. Every, if everyone just shut the, uh, anyhow, what was the name of the book again? Uh, Terror that comes in the night. Uh, uh, it's a uh, Hufford, David J. Hufford. All right, all right, all right. Well, okay, 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 okay. And he gets up. And he's like, I didn't really like these ones anyway. And he's like. One second, come with me. And he shoves the cigarette kind of like up underneath the top gun. So it just kind of hangs there loosely. He wanders past. You can see a couple bits of ash kind of fall here and there. Some with some yeah. books. And he goes behind what, now that you look at it, appears to be a counter. And there is a very old fashioned looking register here. Uh, but he oh. does have like a laptop eye in there. And he flips it up and he's like, I read it, I read it. Uh, uh, yeah, we got, uh, yeah, I got one of those. Yeah, <clears throat> we got one of those. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, uh, hmm, it's somewhere over there. I'll find it. Don't worry, I'll find it. And so he comes back around and he starts heading, uh, kind of down one of the rows. And he, no, 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 oh, uh, yeah, here it is. And he reaches up and he pulls it down blows the dust off and hands it over to you. Hey, here you go. Here you go. This ain't a fucking library. You're paying for that. Oh, yeah, I definitely. apologize. I apologize. I'm taking out my anger and frustration on you. You're a paying customer. You're paying for that, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, shit. There's someone else here. I got two customers. Uh, Ma'am, can I help you? He says to Agent Ray. 
Uh, I'm I'm with her, but actually, while we're uh, talking about Frank Ryder, uh, you know, there's a special occasion coming up, and I know he loves this store. Uh, do you remember the last couple of things he's already bought from me? I would hate to double up. Uh, well, um, yeah, I mean, I, some of it, uh, some of it he sells. He's been selling me a few things here and there. Like, uh, like here, and he's like, uh, where freaking, uh, where'd I put him? Where'd I put him? Uh, here. And he's like, there's a table, and he just kind of pushes some things over. Yeah, he's, uh, he sold me one of these, uh, and he kind of holds up what looks to be a book by Frank Ryder, first edition, Operatic Nights, signed. Uh, then he holds up That's another impressive. one. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess, uh, maybe. Um, I, I think he was kind of, you know, tough for cash or whatever. And then there's this one. Uh, he gave me two. I was about a month ago. Still hasn't sold. And you can see a mint copy of Magnificent 12 in retrograde. And then, uh, oh, this one. Yeah, this one's actually pretty good. And he holds up a copy, a uh, hardcover uh, of Penny's Boat, first edition. Yeah, and there's this. So, yeah, he gave me these three. Um, and I gave him, oh, what did he trade them for? Uh... Pa paramental, paramental, paramental fuck, something like that. Um, uh, it's Packers? a shitty book. It's by the, the guy who wears the turtlenecks all the time. And he, he goes on NPR and talks about mm. himself when he's supposed to be talking about his work. That um, Ellis. Yeah. 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 He thinks he's like, um, I don't know. I, he, he thinks he's like uh, good. I, I, th there's a word for it. He's like another one of them Eric Von Daniken guys, you know, like they, he thinks is he I think he sniffs his own farts or something. He thinks his all his theories are true. This, that, the other. <laughs> Anyhow, um, stop paying attention and eyes are on the three books at, sure. at this point. Like, uh, would you have read them? Do you think? No. OK, no. If you flip them over and you look, you do like the classic. Which uh, she does. <laughs> sure. It's like, I. Operatic Nights uh, is described as a high octane secret, uh, a high octane story about secret agents in a, um, in a kind of a race to save like America uh, against devious, dark, unnamed forces. Uh, and you can see there's a handful of blurbs. It's one of his first books, in fact. And so it's it's signed. It's in great condition. Uh, Magnificent 12 and Retrograde is very clearly sci-fi. And it has like a couple of words and stuff that are associated with it. So it's Magnificent 12 and Retrograde. And it seems to be a story about like these, like some sort of extremist, um, like scientific sect of um, of people who know that aliens exist and have been trying to uh, essentially harness their technology and use it to uh, empower themselves. And so it's all about like the sort of the fall of that group. Uh, and then as you look at the Penny's boat, two things. First, uh, the blurb compared to the other two is fairly mundane. This just appears to be a simple murder mystery. Uh, it has something to do uh, with, and there's like, strangely enough, there's romance involved. Uh, there's a couple blurbs from a few different well-known authors who seem to kind of praise him for kind of reaching beyond his usual his usual shtick and actually painting true, interesting, authentic uh, characters. And when you open it up, you can see that there is a, uh, a small dedication uh, right after the opening pages, and it just says, For Penny. And that's it. And there's nothing like that in the other three. Or excuse me, the other two. Uh, and I'm, I beg your pardon. Um, these are all stacked up next to a couple other books. One is a book by Declan G.W. Ellis called The Abduction Agenda. Uh, and then there are a few copies of Storm Surge. Okay. And then uh, Agent Weaver. You take a look at this book, um, David J. Hufford's The Terror That Comes in the Night, and then there's like a much longer title. It seems to be an academic piece, by the way, an academic book. 
Okay. And there's like no fancy cover to it. It's got a hard basic cover. An experience-centered study of supernatural assault traditions from the University of Pennsylvania Press, 1982. And if you flip open, you look into it, and there's like an abstract at the very beginning. And then again, it's an academic text. It's going to take you... What's your, uh, what's your intelligence score? Uh, my int score yeah. is 13, 65%. This is a, a fairly heavy text in terms of weight and page count but mm -hmm. as you start reading through it it is academically written so Got it would okay. take you if you could probably knock it out in maybe a week uh to really dig into it but the abstract seems to be describing a book about um well first of all uh eyewitness and collected accounts of various various attacks it's like a equal parts psychological and folklore study and okay. it seems to cover a lot of these different um hag attacks and which obviously stands out to you but then there's like synonyms for it and stuff like that where people are having nightmares abductions night terrors things like that uh, so it all seems to be about like nightmares night terrors and it does in fact mention the folklore hag attack um now if you wanted to take this, you wanted to purchase this, you totally find it's it's a negligible expense. It would cost you much oh, of anything. Yeah. Lisa's gonna um, buy it. But it would it would because you're in is thirteen. It would take you about a week to read to be able to get the actual effects that might come from it. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. So what else are you two doing while you're here? Uh, Agent Ray is going to buy all uh, three signed books and okay. uh, just tell Jerry um, he'd probably like to have the, the, my. I think my gift is going to be that I bought his signed copies. That'll be my gift to him. And she gives uh, a charming smile. <laughs> hey, uh, I never really took him for a very. Um, kind of vain or self-absorbed man, which is now more than I can say about that piece of shit, as he kind of looks down at the stack of Ellis books. If you say he's going to like them, I take your word for it. He seems like a nice enough man. Uh, I, I don't know him all that well, uh, but we've had some... He, uh, he'll probably just like that someone uh, care about his work. I know he's got a big collection, and I've been eager to take a look at it, you know, really. Mm -hmm. Get in. I told him like any time because uh, I don't want to speak ill and gossip monger, but I know that he's been having some money issues. You know, aren't we all right? Mm -hmm. uh, business these days. And I told him like I'd be more than happy to, you know, take a look, appraise uh, the value of what he might has. But he said no, and he just brings me in little things like this every now and then. And every now and then I get him a book, no problem. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of different accounts. I got a whole process over here. Like this over mm -hmm. here is my headquarters for all my book ordering needs and such. And hey, if there's anything you need, special order. Oh, I'm definitely. The guy. Yeah. yeah. And there I appreciate that else? you don't go to like these, you know, those big box stores. They're 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 just a fat. You know, they're gonna they're gonna fade away. Trust me on that. That the time I am... of the small bookstore is coming back. Trust me. I uh, I'm a fan of the smaller smaller bookstores, um, and uh, question: uh, did, Was there anything that else that he was looking to buy? Uh, perhaps I, good. No, I forward. think that. Uh, no, I, I. I mean, recently, no. I mean, there was the like I said, there was the paramental one. Um. Yeah, I um. Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Like, we, we're not that close. Like, believe no me, worries. if you wanted to purchase something, I would be more than happy to make the sale. But most of the time, it was an exchange. He gave me a couple, uh, okay. you know, bought me a cup of coffee or donut or something, and mm -hmm. you know, we made a deal. Um. So, yeah, that's all. Lord. But. Uh, is it like his birthday or something? 
Uh, anniversary, uh, actually. Oh, uh, I didn't. I didn't know he was married. No, uh, no, not uh, well. I mean, uh, anniversary of one of his books being uh, given an award. Oh, oh, yeah, no kidding. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, he was a big guy back in the day. I don't know why he quit. Yeah, I don't know why he quit. I don't really talk about it much. Yeah, no. Uh, but th- well, this has been wonderful. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, hey, I'm, hey, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy to help you. Is there um, anything else I can, I can get you? Or- did you happen to have anything else on like hags or anything like that? Oh God, on hags. Or uh, urban legends of Wilmington. Urban legends of Wilmington. Uh, sure, sure, sure. I can. Uh, yeah, let me. Uh, uh, and he goes over and look. Let me see what I got here. The bone kit is in that. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I got, I got a few. I got, uh, I got. Uh, well, I got. It's not Wilmington, but I got, uh, I got Appalachia, North Carolina, coastal, etc. Yeah, I got, I got, I got a couple pieces like this. Uh, heavy stuff, though. This looks heavy. This is uh, this ain't uh, this ain't page turners. The probably you read it before bed, you'll get a good night's sleep. That kind of thing. Um, let's okay. see, hags. Um, used to research papers. That's. Uh, let's see. I got. I got. I got books on. Here you go. Here you go. Hag writing, witches, uh, and various sexual sexual attacks by incubi and succubi. Uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about that one? Sound good? Uh, do you have any others? We'll definitely no, um, take that one. Okay. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. No, no problem. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see what I got going through. Going through. Uh, this one's more an alien abduction. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, okay. Um, well, uh, this one it's related. Uh, it's 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 about sleep trouble, it's disorders, apnea, sexual repression, uh, poor digestion. It's it, it, scientific sleep studies and such. Uh, uh, it's got a fancy title. Uh, I don't know if it's got a hag stuff in it it seems more scientific but it is yeah oh, we'll take that as well all right and you could like he like whistles a bit and he nearly drops a cigarette in the process oh okay you, yeah, know, exactly. you seem like a really smart man um do you, you seem know, very perceptive thank you do you know anything about the history of and she um details like the the apartment building that frank lived in um I can't remember. Ashley can't remember. Bellagio what it was. Oh, oh my god. The Bellagio I'm such an idiot. I oh my goodness. Yes. Now I remember. He was looking into that too now that he Oh my god, I'm so glad. I'm such an I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got I got distracted. Uh yes, yes. Uh okay. Um Yeah, there's not a whole lot of oh, what the Where the frick was it? Um goodness. Um Yeah, there was like a Oh goodness! There's like a scrapbook thing. Um, ah, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was piece. That's right. That's right. Uh, and he kind of goes around and he's like picking stuff up. Oh, where was it? Where was it? Yeah. He uh, he he brought it in. Actually, he brought it in. And uh, and here here you go. And he kind of pulls up what looks like a a photo album. And he just right on the desk. Uh, not a whole lot of dust on it. So, I completely forgot. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, Frank came in and he was like asking similar questions about you, you know, about, you know, you know, about about the building. You want to know about the building? And I'm like, I'm not a library. And so he goes to the library. Then he comes back and he's got this right here. He's got this freaking thing right here. And he drops it on. I'm like, Frank, I, I'm not buying a photo album. I'm not a freaking Walgreens. Does Walgreens buy photo albums? They don't buy photo albums. Do they even <laughs> no, sell they photo? Who has photo album? Anyhow. So anyhow, he drops this right on the on the plate. And he's like, ah, oh, this, that, and the other. And he's like, I want to find details about it. I'm like, I, I, it's a freaking building in Wilmington, man. There's not going to be books on it. Like, that's insane. Like, he, so, and he got all mad. And, he, and, then, and then he saw, I don't know, he like looked out the window and he said he saw somebody he knew. And then he never came back in. To pick it up, and I totally forgot about this. Can you can you give this to him for me? Uh, yeah, I think this is what he intended for me to come in and get. Oh, is it? Oh, I thought it was the other. Oh, I you know what, maybe, was maybe a bit right. mixed too. So maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Uh, no problem. No problem. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I guess 
yeah, it's Did not mine. Did you happen to find anything else about that he was looking into, or no such? Well, I did. You know, I, I looked into uh, I looked into the uh, the Villaggio, whatever the fuck the name is. I don't know. I don't speak Italian. I apologize, yeah. but uh, I couldn't really find anything about it. But I did find some books. Uh, let's see. He kind of flips through, and he's like, "I did yeah, mythology." He was very. He was asking all questions about mythology and such. So yeah, I got some. I got some of those. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait one second, one second. And he kind of see him kind of run down, and he comes hustling back. <sighs> one second. I need to work out more. Oh goodness. <sighs> <laughs> Anyhow, and he hands over, and it's his book on like you know, it's it's Greek and Roman stuff and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he never he never came back. So yeah, anyway, there's this, there's this. Yeah, there's this one here. Yeah. He was very interested. He was throwing out all sorts of names and this and that. And I kept telling him, I'm like public library card you can go there <laughs> but he i don't know whatever it is anyhow uh add it to the pile uh and yes, she'll look please. at ray because like her book that she bought was just the one <laughs> yeah okay. no i'm just stacking up stacking up stacking up oh, okay, okay, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. oh well this looks pretty good this book this looks pretty good yeah yeah okay no, thank you and, Anything else I can do for you? This is uh, just just this for me, but uh, Ray, you, want, you want want a bookmark? I got I made these bookmarks. One second, ah, uh, here you go. And he hands it over to you. Like, what do you think? And it's literally just a white <laughs> bookmark, and it says Nagel's books on it. Super plain. There's nothing to it. What do you think? Oh, very cool. Elegant, right? I like the simp. I like just the simplicity of it. It's very elegant. There you go. Don't say yeah. anything. Get hands you. over credit you. card. And he takes it, kind of runs it. Oh, uh, and he pulls out one of those old fashioned like credit card machines. He's like, Thunk. where we do the. <laughs> 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 he's, he's from a different different time period. And he hands it back the to The first time right, I had to use one of those, bizarre. It's so bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I remember using it a couple times when I was younger. Mm-hmm. So you get all this stuff. No problem. Anything else you want to do here? Um, I think, uh, I think we're good here. Yeah, I, I don't really have anything. Um, I, I think when we leave, like, at the very start, like, Ray was just kind of, like, hanging back and just watching how we were interacted with this, with this man. Mm-hmm. So, uh, when they step out, she will say to Weaver, it's like, Ronnie must have liked you. I definitely looked up to Ronnie. Yeah. And she kind of does like this like really kind of watery sigh. And uh, mm-hmm. she does this thing where she just kind of like looks up at the sky briefly. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah. sounds like R- maybe... Ray does a similar sort of heavy sigh. Yeah. It sounds like uh, we need to go to the library because I do believe there was a fire at this building previously. Something is going on with that. Um, and I want to read this. And so as uh, Ray is driving, um, Lisa's going to start digging into the scrapbook. Okay. So Ray, you're driving. Maybe you're and going turns to the... on the radio and it's a uh, Fleetwood Mac CD. <laughs> Fleetwood Mac's playing. Yeah. Uh, secondhand news comes on, boom, just like that. Uh, and then as you guys are driving, um, you're getting ready to turn and you're flipping through and you're seeing these various cutouts, Weaver, of newspaper articles and things like that that he apparently had found and kind of looks like he's photographed, like he, excuse me, photocopied and then like cut them out and put them in here, etc. And as you're driving, Ray, you go to make a turn and you kind of like, Check your mirrors. When you look up at the rear view mirror, you see sitting in the back seat of your car, staring directly into the mirror, an old woman, 80, 90 years old, with a wrinkled, very deeply creviced face, a nose that is kind of crooked and hooked, and her mouth begins to smile this much wider than you would expect kind of smile and you just hear (laughs) and that is where we will end oh 
Oh. We'll pick up on that. Oh, shit. Next time. My gosh. Because Ashley and, and my have to come up with new characters because they get into a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I just put in chat how I was just remembering Ronnie on the train just coming up and being like, get your shit together. (laughs) (laughs) Fan. Oh, okay. So next time around, hopefully I'll have the whole crew and we'll see what Agent Price has been doing this whole time. And it'll just be like a 20 minute, like me and Steven, where he's just talking about how he took a nap, ate some (laughs) cornflakes. I don't know, I took a shower, you know, that kind of stuff. It'd be a lot of fun. See, now the, the gauntlet's been laid down, so now he actually has to go do some sneaky shit. Yes. Yes, he does. Because if he doesn't, that would be absolutely and utterly wrong. <laughs> All right. Let's go uh, ahead uh, and close it down for the night. Let's do some closing plugs, and we'll get on out. Uh, we'll start. Uh, we're going to start with my tray. My tray, uh, this is your first time on Delta Green, but you, you've been on other streams with us. But... Uh, Tell us where we can find you on the internet. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. And I love this game. And and it's it's great because now I won't miss it live. So, <laughs> so that's <laughs> um I uh and my plays games on YouTube and I make uh System agnostic, multi-system, tabletop content um, about the GM and player experience of tabletops. And if you want to check that stuff out, you should. Fantastic. Uh, Steven's not here, so I have to do it all by myself. Okay. (laughs) (sighs) All right. So uh, we got lots of stuff coming up uh, tomorrow. We've got Call of Cthulhu. You can see everybody currently in the stream and the jackass who is supposed to be in the stream, but not here. (laughs) This exact same group of people, not in this particular order, will be here tomorrow as we're playing some Call of Cthulhu. uh, And we are nearing the end of Los Angeles. Where will they go next? To hell? Probably. We'll find out. (laughs) Then on Monday, you can see Melissa, myself, and my tray. Because my tray, seriously, I know she seems really nice. But she is very violent. And she has been threatening me with violence unless I start inviting her to more games. So my tray, actually, I said, I said the quiet part. Uh, How did you learn like the secret way to become Jeff's friend? Well, it's really simple. It's just money. (laughs) Uh, Uh, So, uh, well, I mean, the other good thing is she fills our Canadian quota. So that's, that's really good too. Uh, We do have, we do have a quota for that. Uh, so we've got Kipser <laughs> who handles Tuesdays and Thursdays. And now we've got my tray Monday, half our Fridays and Saturdays. So <laughs> we have one Canadian in almost every stream. We just got to figure out who we can replace Justin with during Warhammer, And I think we'll be good to go. <laughs> North right. American domination achieved. Sure. <laughs> then um let's see after, after Monday an alien uh, Tuesday, we're going to be playing perils and princesses princesses and perils what is it called again do you remember melissa perils and princesses perils and princesses as steven's running us through a short little uh one or two shots of that as well uh speaking of kipsers i think was her idea and so steven's gonna be running us to that and we have some fun next thursday we're back to simba room uh our dark fantasy rpg on thursdays uh and next friday in this slot we will have warhammer 40k as we alternate between that and delta green etc etc uh and if uh you could also if you're if you're if you're so inclined, check out the Discord. Uh, it's in the description and all that kind of stuff. If you want to come hang out, talk with us, talk about games, etc., all those types of things. Whenever we have a switch over with games, want to influence what me might be playing next, that kind of stuff, uh, or just see random memes and stuff that people drop that annoy me. But that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not upset by it. <laughs> we were appropriately Eyes of March themed today. Yeah, that's very true. All right, so we're going to raid uh, our buddies uh, over at the Defenders of Cobalt. Uh, Joe is making a game called Anvia, and he is running a game called Anvia, and he is a friend of ours. So we are going to go raid him uh, and say hi to him and all that good stuff. Have a great rest of your night. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.